Sirius is a piece uh, for three dancers, and it's kind of hovered around in a lot of different configurations. It's a piece I've made. Um, try, try to make it really very much in the moment. Um, this is music, the, the two Henry Cowell scores I drew from. I've, I've known this music for a lot of years, and have just kind of waited for the right time to use it bubble to the surface. And, and now it seemed like the time, and I, I'm pretty familiar with it. So each day I've kind of gone into the studio not really knowing which piece I wanted to work with or what section. I just kind of called some dancers and started working uh, each day. Um, and the, the actual content of the work came from a dream I had. And it was about um, the screenwriter Charlie Kaufman, um, now director Charlie Kaufman. And he's a hero of mine. And, and funny enough, in the dream, I was interviewing him. But in the dream, he was telling me the story that when he was younger, he used to be an actor. And when he first started acting, he was working on a monologue, and the stage direction for the monologue was serious. So it was serious in parentheses as if that was his instruction. And I remember in the dream thinking, that's such a funny stage direction, you know, as if it wouldn't be ser serious. It meant to do this monologue seriously. It's totally serious, this monologue. But he said that someone who was coaching him at the time let him know that a stage direction is just a stage direction and a word is just a word and there's so many possibilities within that that if you're actually taking something seriously it doesn't mean dark it could mean dark it could mean it could mean joyful it could mean it could mean boring it could mean chicken soup it could mean a thousand different things and once he realized that in all things there was unlimited potential the world had opened up for him creatively so um, you know, I think the, that there is a real thoughtfulness to this piece um, that might suggest serious in its most literal sense, but that the way we're working on texturing it and finding so many different levels within that possibility describes what the process of making the piece is about, and then therefore I hope in the end what the actual impact of the piece is in the end. The music kind of came first. I just, you know, I, I tend to listen to every piece of music I possibly can and then sit with it. And it usually rears its head when it's ready to be a part of a piece. And I usually comes at a time where I feel like I understand the piece well enough that I have something to contribute. Um, and yeah, this is music I've known for a lot of years and I'm just, I'm in love with Henry Cowell. I think the music is, is really spectacular and simple and so multi-dimensional um, all at the same time and when I'd actually been listening to this music thinking I think it's time to visit this and that's when the dream came up so they all sort of presented themselves at the time that uh, that it wanted to happen I mean I always somehow I, I don't know if I totally understand this I like to say it because it makes sense to me but somehow I feel the piece exists already and I am just trying it's out there somewhere in the back of my head or the world or or whatever and I'm just trying to get out of the way of it I'm just trying to as much as I can be a conduit and not let my own ego or sense of aesthetic or insecurity or whatever get in the way of that and it's always this process of of, of peeling away um, that that concept seems to make sense there's no way <laughs> there's no way I can prove it to be the case but it tends to be how I arrive at a decision for making a work they have the dancers have their own physical intelligence that when I throw out a phrase there's something that they through their own intuition their own uh, great talent their own years of study take it to a certain place for them uh, immediately and part of my process with the dancers is challenge, challenge challenging them on some level to get out of that and not to rely on what they're used to but in the actual making of a new work um, I'm looking for opportunities all the time. So I will work on a phrase of movement and see, oh, that's really interesting how they approached that. And it may just be they approached it one time in that way. Oftentimes that comes from a mistake or, or just their, their first instinct. And there's so much in that first instinct that I try to really listen to and look for. And then riff off of it. It might just be one, like, you know, the way a branch grows and when one leaf goes off in this direction follow that path and just sort and sort of see where that takes takes you so um, so each day is kind of a, a journey of, of branches opening up up in different directions so yes I'm, I'm definitely listening to to what what they as individuals want to bring to the to the process for sure 
I struggle with how much information to give people other than the piece itself because I feel like if I'm doing my best work, the piece says everything. Um, at the same time, I understand that having background information about certain things like a title can expand a person's experience. And I, I honestly go back and forth about what's the right thing to do there because I, I want people to feel like bringing their own experience and perspective to something is the right thing and less dependent on me as an artist giving an additional information as to this is how I think you should understand it. So I'm very interested in someone coming to that title and assigning their own meaning to it, especially after they've seen the piece. Um, but I, I know that there is, especially using, say, punctuation in an unusual way in a title, there's a certain amount of, as you say, cryptic nature to that that I wouldn't, I don't want, and the point is not at all to, for anyone to feel alienated, but, you know, the piece arrives at all this information, like it comes from what are the dancers doing today, how do I feel today, what did I dream about last night, like all those things affect how the piece comes into life. So I want the same thing to happen with an audience member, their whole life experience, how they react to this title, what does this mean, how they put those things together. The fact that that then becomes the piece I think is really exciting. Um, so like I said, I, I'm, I'm not really at a conclusion about how much information to give yet. The costuming uh, was a collaboration with Sandra Woodall, who's a, co who's a collaborator I've worked with for many years. Um, she comes from San Francisco and is a very well-known designer of both sets and costumes and an artist. Um, and we, before, the toughest thing with a piece like this is I don't know what it is until it is what it is. And we sort of have to start by just by, just for the sake of organization, start much earlier than that. Um, and so Sandra and I understand each other and how we both approach work similarly. Um, we just started talking about what's going on with us. She wants to know what's going on in your life right now. What are you thinking of? And then we start formulating ideas um, in, into how does that feel and then a basis for it, at least to start from and then get the work going. And then she was able to come here to, to Boise and work with me in the studio for a few days, fairly early in the piece where there was some time for it to be affected by it. Um, we we went through a lot of different conceptions uh, of it, and it had a lot of different forms, but in the end, having a very simple palette, the pale grays, and dressed very similarly. Um, you know, it's two men and one woman, um, but it's a very unisex look. They're all wearing pants and shirts. Um, and I think, you know, I, I can't honestly say this is the reason, but I think it suggests three aspects of one idea or three aspects of the same person. Um, in the end, that's 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 my hope with it. It's so I tell you, it's so hard to describe what things mean until several months after the piece is premiered. I mean, you know, just because I try so hard to not edit what comes from the subconscious, um, just the th this just the act of thinking it through and and trying to describe it stops that stops that flow to some degree. I mean, I have to, I have to every day. I have to describe it to dancers. I, there has to be some kind of language for it, but I do as much as I can to stay out of the way of it, but I, I'll have a lot more to say after the premiere.